God says in the Bible that you should sweat yourself for your food. Plant whatever, easy, simple, but plentiful of nutrition. I think if you have garden, you should plant more fruit trees and food. Even if you have balcony, you can plant it. Or if you have a flat roof, you plant up there. <laughs> you don't plant everywhere, but you can use some plastic box or something, or a ceramic box and fill it with earth. Fill your compost and just keep planting plants. Very fun, you go out and see the whole roof is green and eatable, you know, beautiful. Oh, it's really beautiful. So now you try to uh, plant those vegetables that bear fruits, like beans, pumpkin stuff, uh, cucumber, those things that bear fruit and simple, easy, yeah? So it becomes a habit. And then you eat your own produce. It's good to be independent, okay? In case something happens, you will have sufficient food for yourself, okay? Plant a lot of fruit trees wherever you can. Welcome, enthusiastic viewers, to Planet Earth, our loving home. From backyards to balconies, rooftops to ravines, and even on walls, organic fruits and veggies can be grown just about anywhere you can imagine, whether you live in the city or countryside. On today's program, we will see how you can easily grow your own fresh organic produce. What kind of space do you need to grow your own super fresh delicious fruits and vegetables? As it turns out, almost any small area will do. One of the easiest places to start is on the flat rooftop. Growers in the Taiwan Organic Lifestyle Association have discovered some of the benefits and joys to organic rooftop gardening. If 有机的种植它是完全要用有机的材料它不使用化学肥料跟化学合成的农药所以说它是用有机生产的那个肥料它不经过工厂的加工所以说它不会增加这个二氧化碳的排放量我觉得就是它可以就是在很简单的条件就可
Thanks to the government's encouragement, rooftop gardening has become very popular in Japan. In addition to saving energy and producing an abundance of fresh food, these gardens have created an interesting side benefit. But growing vegetables in the city is not limited to rooftops. They can be grown almost anywhere, even on a wall. Then what is the best type of seed to plant? How much land do we need to be self-sufficient? Let's find out by visiting the Diggers Club at Heavenswood Garden in Dromana, Australia's largest garden club. Founded by Mr. Clive Blazy, the club specializes in growing heirloom plants, traditional organic varieties of produce, which have been neither hybridized nor genetically modified. The broccolis that you're buying from the supermarkets have been um, hybridized in such a way to produce a rather large head, which is good for harvesting all at once. But that large head has got no flavor and it's full of water and no goodness. So the types of broccoli that we have uh, will produce a smaller head, which is full of goodness, you know, and you know, the, the flavour is just sensational in these things. Heirloom vegetables can also be unusually beautiful and highly nutritious. We've got a beautiful old um, variety of Tuscan kale called Cavallo Nero and it um, has the highest concentration of antioxidants of any vegetable known to man. Gram for gram it is twice as po po powerful um, in terms of antioxidants as broccoli. You know, so the benefits you're getting from using organic seeds far outweigh and outstrip the stuff that you're buying from supermarkets or the seeds you're buying that are hybrids. If you plan your garden carefully, you can grow a remarkable amount of produce in only a few square meters of space. Clive did a lot of research into trying to find the best ways to um, encourage people to grow their own vegetables and what we achieved or what Clive achieved here was to um, create what is called a mini plot. And it's been based on that, that in order to feed one person for a whole year, all you require is 10 square metres, nothing more. You know? And it is just based on successional plantings. Uh, and, and by that I mean where you might grow a heavy brassica or a heavy feeding plant, the next succession for that would be perhaps to put in peas or beans that actually fix nitrogen back into the soil. So in order to feed a family of four, you need 40 square metres. Um, and that area, when you think about it, 10 square metres is, is the area underneath a, a four-wheel drive. And that's all you need to feed an area for one person. Can you tell us about the size of this garden and, and how many people it would feed? Yeah, what, what you're seeing here is, is um, roughly 30 square metres. So this plot here would feed three people uh, with successional planting. Uh, for a whole 12 months. What we put in this is a whole mixture of different types of things. We've got actually herbs in here um, as well as vegetables. Um, we showcase some um, beautiful old um, 
black Russian tomatoes in there with a little bit of perilla, with some mizuna, um, with some um, uh, leeks, uh, capsicums, pak cho red pak choy uh, interplanted with marigolds, uh, and then some garlic chives. Uh, so this is, is for now. And then the next successional planting that would come in would, would be peas and maybe beans and different things like that. So it's a rotational thing that will go for a whole 12 months. And we actually set that out in, um, in our books or uh, on our website. What if your garden produces more food than you need? What can you do with the excess bounty? Hillside Gardens near Los Angeles, California, USA has come up with a delightful solution. The concept is free food for everybody, basically. Um, this is a neighborhood that all gets together and brings everything they grow in their yard that they can't use themselves, like fruits, vegetables, herbs, flowers, whatever they have that they can't use. They bring it over on a, uh, once a month to my house and we divide everything up and make sure everybody who participates gets some of what everybody grows for free. Wow. So, so free food. And we also have um, people who don't happen to grow anything mm -hmm. um, can get a bag and participate by either volunteering to do the bagging and sorting mm -hmm. or to volunteer to deliver. So like today we have six delivery volunteers and each one is delivering to a different neighborhood. So it saves on gas too. Established for about two years, the Hillside Produce Cooperative's concept of freely sharing extra fruits and veggies has quickly gained popularity. We started with six neighbors and now we have about 360 members. Um, that's just in our East Side Los Angeles cooperative and there's six chapters in California that are up and running. On the day of our visit, over 40 people were happily sharing their fresh organic fruits and vegetables. They're going to take home a huge bag, like uh, you spend about 60 bucks at a really great farmer's market mm -hmm. is about what you get to take home. And besides all the fresh produce, people baked today. Mm -hmm. So we have banana bread, zucchini bread, honey wheat bread, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, cookies, brownies, Jam, I think we have four kinds of jam people brought, and it's all homegrown, homemade mm -hmm. stuff. For more information on the Diggers Club, please visit www.diggers.com.au. Hillside Produce, please visit www.hillsideproducecooperative.org. Our heartfelt appreciation, earth-loving members of the Taiwan Organic Lifestyle Association, the Diggers Club and Hillside Produce Cooperative for sharing your green tips and enthusiasm for growing one's own fruits and vegetables. We wish all many more joyous years of gardening in peace and harmony. Thank you for joining us today on Planet Earth our loving home. May you be blessed with an abundance of happiness and health. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash PE 